Hey guys, so today we are going to do a winged eyeliner tutorial. I've been getting quite a few requests from you guys about this in DMs and in comments, so let's dive right in. Um, I will say, by no means am I a professional. Um, I definitely make mistakes along the way. Everyone does, so I will tell you what I do. Um, it's gotten a little bit better over the years, of course, uh, but a few things to have on hand, of course. Eyeliner of choice. I today am using the Makeup Forever Tangerine, no, any tangerine shade. Why am I doing orange? Well, A, it's just a fun color, but B, I figured it would actually be probably a little bit easier to see um, some of the mistakes and some of the actual things that I'm doing versus black, which sometimes can just lead to very smudgy things. So anyway, so orange for that. Um, and then also what definitely to have on hand, I personally don't use eye makeup remover, um, but I will say have something similar to that. Um, I'm not sure, I can't speak personally to how that will actually perform um, because why, so I have micellar water on hand. Um, why are you gonna do this? So it's going to be probably trial and error, especially if this may be one of the first few times you're doing it or if it's just a struggle for you to get them even. This is going to be probably the easiest and gentlest way to remove any of the mistakes or any of the movement around your eye area without actually tugging. Um, plus the tugging over time can get really irritating and I've definitely made my, air, my eye area raw before and it hurts like a mofo. So let's just be gentle to the eye area. Um, and yeah, so like this, I'm not sure if you guys may be familiar with micellar water, but it basically has little oil molecules suspended within the water so it provides a lot more slippage and it's easier to actually um, move some of the stuff around. So have this on hand, and then what you're gonna be actually using with this, not like a typical cotton round or a typical like, Q-tip, which you would use to with this to take off like large amounts of makeup, um, have actually an eyeliner uh, brush. So here I have an actual flat one, um, so just a flat top guy. Um, I'm gonna be using this specifically to like clean up edges and make like sharper lines. Um, if you prefer, so again, this is just a flat guy. If you prefer angled, yes, this is dirty. I just did use this to do uh, eyelet, eyebrows. Um, but if you prefer angled, by all means, do an angled. I'm just using flat. It sometimes is easier, especially for beginners to use. Um, if you're learning how to do this for the first time and angled may be a little bit of a mind fuck for you, so let's dive right in. So first and foremost, what I'll say is definitely use a sharpened pencil. Um, so I'm teaching with a pencil today just because it's, again, very easy to work with. Um, if you're gonna be going in with an actual eyeliner pen, it is going to require a little bit more precise of a hand, but again, just doing this to show purely for a tutorial. This is not a product. This is jet, well, I mean, it is for sale, I guess, by Glossier, but this is just an eye um, eyeliner sharpener. So hence what I'm doing right now. So again, this isn't like the bluntest pencil I have, but again, because you're gonna be wanting a pretty precise line, um, which the micellar water will definitely help with, but it's better just to start out with a sharpened pencil anyway, so it's easier to work with sometimes. So just sharpening this guy right up. It honestly doesn't look that much better, but we're gonna work with it. So, um, you may have heard, and if not, welcome to the tip, um, but you may have heard in the past to actually use the tail of your eyebrow as your guide. Um, so really what I'll be doing here is kind of taking my handy dandy mirror and really taking a look here and placing little dots that will be my guiding line um, as we arc the line towards the actual uh, tail. Now I will say, not everybody's eyebrows are even. Myself, my eyebrows are not even. So I've had to get um, very observant in, and like really hone in on how to, because for the longest time I was using my eyebrows as a guide and I was getting very frustrated. <laughs> my wings kept coming up pretty uneven. Uh, so I kind of figured out what I was doing wrong and really, what was the deciding factor of why the F aren't these getting even if I'm following my tails? Um, turns out that this is actually, um, it swoops a little bit lower than this guy does. This one actually ends a little bit higher up. And also sometimes um, the actual structure of your bones on your face may also play into how something looks on an angle. So like for instance, I wonder if you can see it here. Um, 
as you're staring at your face to do makeup, you pick up on some of these things when things don't like look quite right, um, like quite even and symmetrical. So what I've noticed is like this guy here is also like a little bit flatter, um, whereas this is a little bit more rounded. Like if I turn this way, it's like a little bit more rounded and this one is like a little flatter. So like it's also been fun, fun to uh, play with the angles as well. So keep all those things in mind. Not everyone's face is incredibly symmetrical. Um, that's the beauty of makeup. You can actually kind of work with it to correct it. And um, but anyway, so just keep those things in mind. But so what I'm gonna do now, I will turn up the light. Hope it's not too blinding. Highest it goes. All right, we're gonna work with it. So again, here, all I have on, by the way, is just eyebrows and like a little bit of concealer in the little nook um, and a teeny bit on my inner, totally naked here and for the most part here. Um, I recommend doing that again just because you will be using micellar water to take some stuff off as you clean up. So know that you'll be going back in with concealer towards the end, but just to make it easier and not take off layer upon layer and have to keep going back, it can get annoying. So do as you wish. Um, but so, all right, we are going to take a hot minute and just take a look. So you can see, let's see if I can center this. So you can see, again, this tail kind of ends out here. So, and I do, I honestly prefer the angle I get when I follow this um, tail versus if I follow this. So I'm gonna take it, my pencil and I'm gonna make a mark around here. Oh, my hand's a little shaky, I really, I wish I had more coffee. <laughs> um, but I will say also, so Makeup Forever pencils in particular are pretty soft. So, which means if you've been doing makeup for a while, you can kind of tell the difference between a hard pencil versus a soft pencil. Sometimes if you get um, a fairly inexpensive pencil and it might have been on the shelf a while, you'll really struggle um, with the hard core, like the actual color component of the pencil, and it'll like kind of tug on your skin. That's more of a hard pencil. I mean, that might also be expired, but regardless, that's what I mean by hard. Um, this is fairly soft. It's really easily smudgeable. You can work with it very easily. And so that's why I like to use this, especially around the eyes. I sometimes use it on lips. They're like a multi-purpose crayon. Um, but yeah, just that's what all I'm gonna really say about learning and kind of like smudging and figuring out the right line. Probably go with like a softer pencil. Um, all right, so I will stop talking so we can actually look at what this looks like. So there's that dot. Now again, I need to kind of concentrate because this will make, if I follow this tail, it'll make it more of an, um, a sharper vertical line. And I want to have it be a little bit more sultry of a cat eye. So. You like that. See, I can even tell this I'm already gonna have to lower. And along with the micellar water, you're definitely gonna wanna have some Q-tips on hand. Um, they can also be great if you use them with an actual uh, micellar water little dab as well, but I don't have free hands, so. <laughs> But yes, I also could have done that with the micellar water and not my saliva, but such is life. Right. That apparent again. Okay, cool. So sometimes I will go back in and sharpen a few times, to be honest, just so we're working with the finest tip possible. Um, accuracy. So now, so kind of like working from the actual corner of your eye. I, I always follow, so like kind of continuing outward, and you're gonna just follow the general line of your eye until you meet that dot. Now again, you, want, you do wanna have a fairly straight line to begin with, so it is minimal cleanup, but thankfully you're going in and cleaning up after. So it's not the end of the world, again, from like a learning perspective. If you have a little bit of smudgery, you're gonna clean that up and make it really sharp in a hot minute. So we're just gonna draw the line out that way. And then I'm gonna do the same thing on the other eye.
And sometimes it is so frustrating to try and get it the first time, you might have to do it a few times. So I will absolutely be honest and show you every time that I have to redo it, just to prove you gotta be patient. <laughs> oh my goodness, and my nose is so itchy. I apologize. Anyway. So if you do happen to have a little bit of, I don't want to say excess skin, but I guess you could say that, yeah. Um, if you do happen to notice that like either the pencil might be gripping the skin a little bit or um, you're just having a little, you have additional folds in your eyelid, what have you, um, don't force it. Like you'll see I'm doing like shorter strokes and that's primarily so that the pencil itself will get the line there but I'm not tugging. Like if you can see, is it picking it up? Yeah, if you can see like if I just genuinely continue the line with a pretty strong hand, I'm genuinely like grabbing and pulling the skin with me. I don't wanna be doing that. Um, I don't wanna be adding to any additional lines that may be forming there. So just be very short with your actual lines. And again, you're going to be going in in a, in a few minutes to actually clean up. So just keep that in mind. So I just noticed I was looking again to just like clean up because yes, I will be having to go in for a third time to clean this up because what I keep doing by habit from years of doing it, this again, this line is actually going to this tail. You'll see it's a much more, it's a much sharper angle. Whereas this one, the tail's a little bit lower, it's a much more swooping angle. So I need to straight up try and ignore this brow and just genuinely follow that line. Because again, otherwise it looks like all sorts of funky, um, unintentional funky. So, uh, oh, and there you can even see like what I was saying in terms of ex excess skin, like those folds, that's what you wanna avoid um, pulling on. So remember, short little movements, and then the angle is half the battle. No one, professionals might get it perfect, the average person like you and I, might not get it perfect the first few times. Um, but, so yeah, feel free to laugh and watch me correct it yet again. But you'll see, so it's no longer going up towards that. It's now going out here, which is much more similar to how this one is. So, whew, I think we made it, guys. Okay. So, now what I'm going to start to do is actually fill in the lines more um, to actually fill in the color, because literally all we did is just draw out the lines as a guide. So, now you're just you're gonna see me go in and actually uh, go in it to try to try and fill in the wing. So you'll see here that I started the line maybe like either two thirds or like 75% of the way across my eye, kind of like towards this right here. Now, depending on the look that you're going for, you'll really, it depends on the angle that you really adjust that line. So I personally really like to do elongating cat eyes that are a little bit more on like, a little more on the sexy side. Um, but of course there's a whole different bunch of styles, like the more, up you go, I like to always refer to it as like Amy Winehouse, but like the up, more up you go, I always think more of like 1950s pinup and not as much of like sex kit and rock star, like, like Charlotte Tilbury-esque. Um, so um, that's really where those types of looks, those varieties really come into play is the more you play with the actual thickness and angles of all these lines. So for instance, you see right here, 
this is a very, very low angle. This again is just working to actually accentuate my eye and then elongate it and pull it out. If I were to be doing a more playful, feminine, um, again, depending on the look that you're going for, you might wanna make it a little thicker on top or you might wanna actually make this a bit higher up. Totally depends on the style you're going for, your eye shape, a whole lot of different factors. Uh, but that's why you're seeing me do this particular look because that's the kind of look that I'm going for. Um, so I, I'm gonna continue to go in um, and I'm gonna go on the other side as well, but explanation. Oh, one more thing that I did want to note, um, mainly because this is something that I struggled with for a very long time, is when you're actually filling in the tail, um, whether it's with pencil or it's with a brush and gel or it's with an actual eyeliner pen, um, one thing that I was very timid with for quite, I mean, literally years, was actually instead of just doing strokes out to fill it in, actually don't be afraid to actually go the opposite way. So for instance, like I said, you've been seeing me do a lot of this outward, but don't be afraid to actually take it and drag it this way. It might sound silly. Maybe you're not as timid as I was. I kept freaking out that I was gonna ruin the pen if I was using like the Kat Von D Trooper pen or with this, I'm like, oh my God, what am I gonna do? I'm gonna have a lot more cleanup. No, I mean, maybe depending on how sharp your sharper, dull your pencil is, but I've found, personally, I've just found it recently to be very easy compared to what I, my perception of it was. So that's all, just don't be afraid to play. Not too shabby. I do have cleanup, but we're gonna get to that in a hot sec. <laughs> okay, so you have both eyes on. Now we're gonna take the actual micellar water and the flat brush or the angled brush, whichever you prefer. Um, I'm gonna do this over here because uh, uh, the sink's over here, but uh, I'm gonna go this over here and just you're gonna saturate the bristles. Um, so whether or not you have like a little cup that you have micellar water in or whatever. So anyway, so you're going to saturate the actual bristles and then you're going to pinch them so that way you're getting as much of the liquid out as possible, but you do want it to still be damp. You don't want it to be dry after doing that. So um, I'm going to take it over here. Actually, this is the most dramatic side that needs to clean up. So you'll see that there's actually like a double line there. Let's see if I fo can focus on that. There we go. So you can see there's like a little bit of a double line there. So I'm gonna just work this to actually remove it. And then I would, I don't have a flipping towel with me, but I would definitely make sure you're taking off any of that excess or any from that cleanup right there. All right, so you see how much cleaner of a line that is? So I'm gonna do the same on the other eye and then we are gonna wrap this look up. So you can totally do more cleanup, more cover up. Um, I am actually going to go in and do some more, um, not clean up with this, but I do just wanna have a more complete look. I am going to probably be filming something else right after this. So that's just my personal preference. Um, so yeah, so you can be totally done here. Um, but yeah, give it a try. Give it a try with the micellar water. Again, that's just something that I fairly recently started incorporating. Would love to see how it works for you. If you give it a shot with actual eye makeup remover and not micellar water, let me know. Does it take more off if you're doing it, like for instance, this was a lot of just bare. Um, I do, like I said, I have concealer here and up here, but nothing else that would have really impacted the wings themselves. So if you go ahead and do any of this with your full face already on, I'd love to know. Leave it in the comments. Like, does it actually take off the layers underneath? Have you found that micellar water works better or is um, not as 
removing of your other layers than eye makeup remover, let us know. Thanks guys. See you next time.